So, today is the 5th of June, 2017. This is Rod Slater uh, chatting with his old friend Roy Mack. Now, Roy is probably the best known character in Watsonian circles. Everyone knows him. He's been here forever and fulfilled all sorts of roles. It feels like that. <laughs> and fulfilled all sorts of roles in the school. But let's start, Roy. Just t tell us about your early life, your upbringing. Mm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, Rod. A very interesting life in its in itself. I was an only son. Uh, my father was Sir William Burrow, who has the Burrow Collection in Glasgow, was farm manager in Berwick, and my mum was a PE teacher. So brought up for uh, a bit of time, about a year, I think, down in Hutton, where Sir William Burrow stayed. Yeah. And then the family got the chance to take over a small farm, really small farm, like almost a croft in Melrose. So we moved and I, the rest of my time until 18 and a half was spent in Melrose. Yeah. Seat in, as you had to be there, rugby, yeah. uh, all sorts of things to do with the town and eventually I became a Melrosian, yeah. which was a proud moment because you're selected by the town to represent it in the Border Common Ridings. Yeah. So that brought me really into focus there. Okay. And what, what did you have to do as a Melrosian? Then? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a week of ceremonies. You ride the marches, which goes back away back to the debatable land when England may have stolen some of your territory. Yeah. And you take the borough flag to the, the boundaries and just check that the, the common land yeah. still belongs to the town. Yeah. So all the border towns do this. There's mm -hmm. nine weeks of mayhem yeah. when each yeah. town looks at its common, preserves the common, and then yeah. parties and ceremonies and all sorts. It was great fun. How Fantastic. old were you? When, when you I was a... Uh, well, you have to be single and you have to be over 20. So yeah, I was yeah. actually 21 yeah. and single. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which was an exciting time. Yeah, yeah. And, and although you've lived all these years in Edinburgh, yeah. obviously, you've still yeah. very, very strong... Yes, I think, I, yeah, I think, you know, as they say down there, you can take you can take Melrose at the man, but you can't. You know, yeah, I, I yeah, yeah, story. yeah. And I, I've kept connections down there. I, uh, Liam Harvey, who's a former pupil of Watson's, is headmaster of St Mary's School, yeah. the private school, yeah. and uh, I, I'm a little contact down there. I own a cottage. I kept the family house down yeah, there. Yeah. I fish, avid fisherman, mm -hmm. and one of the benefits is you get free fishing in the Tweed with the cottage. Mm -hmm. So that takes me down quite a lot, Rod. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, I still love going down, to be honest. Yeah. So you feel that, despite the fact you lived in Edinburgh, you're really... I think so. I, I think, I mean, it's a bit, you know, we had a huge debate when I retired, should we move to Melbourne? Yeah. What, what really happens is the guys you remember all these years ago, they've all gone. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody leaves at some point. Yeah. And, and you kind of remember the memories of a good place like that. Yeah. But it's not the same. Yeah. You get the benefit of going down for a weekend or a week. Yeah. And it's fun. Yeah. But to live there, no, no. This is home. Yeah. This is cool. But the Melrose Sevens, every every um, year, except this year, you missed them. The Melrose Sevens. <laughs> I started working at the Melrose Sevens. I, I was nine years old because in those days, on the Sunday after it, you got paid to take a plastic bag and pick up litter. <laughs> a big job. A big job. And right? you got five shillings or something. But yeah, that yeah. got you into it. Yeah. And from nine right through, uh, I started doing the announcing, I think, 32 or 33 years ago. Yeah. Haven't missed a Sevens apart from this year. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> now, why but, did you miss them this year? <laughs> the chance to go to the Hong Kong Sevens was just too yeah, big a, yeah. too big a pool. And, yeah. and, and it was an amazing event. I went to the Watsonian Dinner in Hong Kong, mm -hmm. which again was quite yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. And uh, you have to just do these things. Tick, yeah. tick the box, been there and done yeah. it. Yeah. It was good. But between Melrose and Hong Kong, <laughs> you'd choose Melrose. I would stay in Melrose a hundred times. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I certainly would. I certainly would. Yeah. So you, you left school. Yeah, the went on, well, yeah, yeah. I actually um, applied for the police. It mm -hmm. was the only thing I'd wanted to do. And at that time, you had to be five foot eight mm -hmm. to join Lothi well, the borders, Roxburgh Selkirk and yeah. the Shire Police Force. Applied, I got through and failed the physical because I didn't oh. make five foot eight. Oh. And they wouldn't take me, so I was absolutely gutted. Oh. And then I sat and thought, what are you going to do? And I saw my dad working long, long hours on the farm. And I saw my mum come in, bright and breezy, having loved her job as a PE teacher, yeah. and thought, yeah, that's maybe the route to go. So I applied for a job now, mm -hmm. and fortunately was accepted, and uh, the rest is history, I guess. PE yeah. is the world. So you you did all your teaching practices yeah. and so on, but your first job was... Well, my first job 
was a uh, interesting in that I had worked in a hostel, a place called Balakan Rain Castle, mm -hmm. uh, which was for lads from 16 to 18 at that time, the city of Glasgow. Good preparation. Uh, was, for it was an approved school. I mean, yeah, I came to another approved school, I suppose. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and I got offered the job there in the summer. Yeah. But I hadn't signed anything. I hadn't said yes or no. And I got a call from Jordan Hill to say they'd had a call from George Watson's college. Was there a somebody they thought I might fit the bill at the school and I should apply? And I did apply. Um, and it was it was interesting because Donald Scott had just been promoted to head of PE. Right. So he actually took the interview. Yes. And he was new to the job, and I was going to be new to the job, so it just worked on such a charming guy, as you know. Yeah, yeah. He says the only way I got the job was because as a fellow boarder, I was the only guy who knew where Langham was, where he came from, <laughs> yeah. and that's why I got the job yeah. here. But, but yes, it was my first job. I was 20 years old when I started at Watson's. 20. 20. Yeah. My birthday was, was the 1st of September, and instead of my parents doing the sensible thing and giving me a year, they put me into school. So I was literally oh, yeah. one year, I was four. Yeah, yeah. I left Jordan Hill, uh, you know, age yes. 20. Yeah, yeah. My 21st was a few days after I joined Watson's, but yeah. literally I was you 20 years 20, old, yeah. and the older boys were 18. Yeah. So yeah. it was yeah, interesting. What, okay. what was it like in your... The school? What was the school like in your at the beginning when you came here? How big was the department? It was, it was, the, school, the school just seemed to be so big, you know, you'd been to a small border school. Mm -hmm. Teaching practice, I'd never had seen anything this size. It was 1,100 boys, yeah. boys only. Yeah. Uh, I remember the first day when Roger had us in the staff meeting, completely, I had no clue what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I had no clue. <laughs> and it was only reassuring when I came out that neither had anybody else. It was <laughs> yeah, so, it was just so that was fine. <laughs> uh, yeah, big, there was a huge excitement about the co-education. Yeah. And that, that was a good thing at that time because there was a lot of movement. That was just on the horizon. Just on the horizon. Yeah. 18 Could months, the, two years after. That was 1970, was it? 71? I joined it in 72. 72, right. 72. Okay. Yeah. 75, I think. Yeah. Some of the guys came over so and it was a gradual yeah. close. So that was exciting. Mm -hmm. The campus, you wouldn't recognise then compared to now. Mm -hmm. uh, I stood in the music school, which was beautiful and spanking, and I looked right through to the the grandstand. the grandstand. There was nothing yeah, there. Yeah. So there was no astro, no technical department, no boarding house, no lower primary. No, just this it was all of grass, all the grass pitches yeah. right through. Yeah. And look what's happened in the time. In one short career, yeah. the yeah. campus has grown so much. Yeah. Fun days, much more relaxed, I think. Yeah. Um, I mean, we'll go on to anecdotes later on, <laughs> but one of the thing that struck me was lunch. We actually stopped for lunch white tablecloths, menus, yes. Yes. and the ladies would come up and ask what starter you would like, what main yes. course you would yes. like, and that was served to you, yes. with coffee and tea after it. Yes. How on earth did they do, how did yeah. we do that? <laughs> yes. I have no <laughs> idea. Mm -hmm. uh, and Anna Weston, who's a name that will come oh, up a lot yes. of oh, yes, yes. was the only man in the world, I think, that liked tripe. So <laughs> they used to cook tripe for one of the school meals. <laughs> Well, I don't know if anybody else took it, <laughs> he was the only but one. he ordered it for two days. Yeah, yeah. He wanted two oh, days yeah, of tripe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, very relaxed. Uh, yeah. but, but the important thing was this whole uh, enthusiasm, because it was an enthusiastic time about the co-ed, mm -hmm. that there really were very few problems, thanks to Roger yes. and Hilda Fleming, to be fair. Yeah, she yeah. got very bad press, but yeah. there was a lot of hard work went into that, mm -hmm. with me and Nickel particularly, yes. yeah. uh, to, to ensure a successful merger. Yeah. And it was. Yeah. And in those early days, um, what, you didn't live in a boarding house immediately, did you? Or? I was in a, a bed set uh -huh. in Morningside yeah. and in Jimmy Cowan. Yes. My wee mentor friend oh, yes. asked if I'd like to be his assistant in the boarding house. Yes. So in the October that first year. Of that first of year? Of the first year I went into the boarding house for two years. Which one? Myerside House in yeah. Myerside Road. Yes. And at that time, Rod, the, the, the whole thing was changing because they were going to build a boarding house, a yes. co-ed boarding house in the school, because yes. we had five boarding houses at one time. Yes. So this was all going to come into the school. Mm -hmm. uh, so the timing of that was quite interesting as well. Yeah. Uh, two years on I got married yeah. and we had bought a flat in, in Jordan Lane yes. and uh, we're very happy in there. Good times. And, and the, the, the boarding, you, mm -hmm. you, you stayed in as a yeah, assistant, well, the, the assistant housemaster. Assistant housemaster, you had one night on, one night off, one yeah. weekend on, one weekend off, yeah. as black and white as that. With Jim Cowan. With Jimmy Cowan, yeah. no wages, but you lived free. Yeah. So it was it was a good deal for a single guy. Yeah. Although I was engaged, yeah. uh, it was a good chance to, to save money. Yeah. And you couldn't have been anybody better than Jim. Oh no. 
I mean, the fun we had with the gym was, you, you probably couldn't tell half the things that happened with Jimmy Cowan. Lovely, yeah, yeah. lovely man. Yeah, yeah. Lovely man. And then after you got married, you left oh, the right. wedding, did you? Uh, yeah, we stayed yeah. in Jordan Lane two years. Yeah. We then moved out to Roslyn. Yeah. And I bought a house in Roslyn. And we had four years in, in Roslyn when Morvan was born out there. Yeah, yeah. And then one of these weird Wilson's things that happened was I was called into Roger's office and he said, we have, uh, we're moving one of the boarding houses in mm -hmm. Tipperlin Road mm -hmm. and would Florence and I consider running it? Yeah. It was going to be for first and second year boys only yeah. to get them used to yeah. boarding before they went into the big house. And that was a huge thought. I mean, that was a crazy, crazy amount mm -hmm. of time. Again, it was yeah. night on, night off, weekend on, weekend yeah. off. A lot of thought went into it. If I'm being 100% honest, the idea of living for nothing mm -hmm. was a good one. Yeah, yeah. So we sold Rosalind, bought a flat that we could never have afforded, rented it out, and yeah. we had four years in Tipperland Road as housemaster. Yeah. As well as P.E. and all the other yeah. duties. So they got the money's worth. And with Morvan growing up, Morvan grew up with Stuart all these born, big brothers. Stuart was lit, not literally born there, but yeah, he, yeah. he arrived in the boarding house yeah. when he was just born. Yeah. So, yeah, well, that was a good thing and a bad thing. I remember one night my daughter swearing profusely in the bath. <laughs> this, uh, well, I wouldn't name him because yeah. he's become a good friend. They were, they were teaching her to swear, basically, yeah, which yeah, was great yeah, fun yeah. for the boys <laughs> at breakfast. Yes. Yeah, but they sorted it out. Yeah. <laughs> so boarding was a big part of it. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And during that time, still continuing to teach Still the duties that I had, yeah. absolutely, mm -hmm. full-time table. Mm -hmm. uh, but you, you go into that knowing that's, that's the deal. That's, yeah. that's why you do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of support from the school, obviously, at that time. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, it, it, you know, if you have two really young children, yes. you may as well be in a place like a boarding house because you're fairly tired anyway. Yes. And it set us up. It set us up for life in terms of finances, yeah. without yeah. question. Yeah. And to finish off the boarding story, yeah, on, yes. uh, that house closed and mm -hmm. I then helped out with Ian Brown and Liz Smith mm -hmm. in the new boarding house and I did four years duties once a week, twice a week there. Yeah. What was it like in, in the new boarding house? It, it was a strange concept. I 100% believed that there was something psychological about the boarding houses being out the campus. Because a kid goes home, yeah. he crosses a street, he gets out of the school, yeah. uh, and there were small or family units, they were quite competitive, they were your kids, you yeah, know, and if they misbehaved, they let you down. Yeah. And then you had this 90 plus co educational box. Yeah. within the school. Yeah. Um, I don't think you could give the care, you couldn't give mm -hmm. the, the individual care that mm -hmm. maybe they should have had. <sighs> strange, strange, not something I thought was a, was a great idea. And in the end of the day, of course, Rod, things changed. The big, the big companies, you could take your families with you. Yeah. The independent, you know, the, the schools were growing up in Saudi Arabia and everywhere yeah. else. The Royal Navy, Army and Air, Air Forces stopped uh, supporting yeah. the families. Yeah. So we had to look at the role of boarding in Watson's and it was agreed that really the it things had changed. Just got it just got, got smaller, smaller and smaller, and smaller the costs and rose yeah. uh, and, and its place, it wasn't a boarding school. Mm -hmm. We were a school that had boarding yes. and that's a very different yes, thing. As opposed to very different thing. some of the other schools. Yep. That yeah, so it just yeah. slowly yeah. slid away. Yeah, And you became a guidance teacher, was yeah. that, at yeah. what yeah. point was that? Yeah, Alec we well Alec Weston had a really good plan. Not everybody's academic, as you well know. Yeah. And especially in third year, that seemed to be a, a troubled year for many boys in particular. Mm -hmm. And I think they were forced into an academic route that they found very difficult. Yeah. So Alec Weston created a, a class called 3M4. Yeah. And the idea was to obviously educate them, but look at other avenues to, to get them into the outdoors, to do adventurous things, yeah. to do the outdoor centre stuff, yeah, yeah. get their confidence built up. Mm -hmm. They were little entrepreneurs, half of these guys, yeah, and, yeah. And, and have become so. I've become so. Yeah, yeah. So, to Alex's credit, he asked me if I would run that class, and I did that for three years as well yeah. as the boarding house, and I loved it. I thought it was yeah. just no, absolutely right. I could identify with you'd that. You'd relate to I'm that. I'm not an academic at oh, all, no, what, but I, I got it. Yeah, but you could I'd understand these boys. Absolutely. I've been on a farm, an only son, and I just saw them blossom in many, many oh, ways. Yeah, yeah. So, so, that uh, carried on for quite a while. And then an assistant principal teacher of guidance came up in third year, mm -hmm. and that was the start of four years of guidance mm -hmm. between first and third year. Yes. Working with others. Of course. Yeah. And did it, did you enjoy that? Oh yes. Yeah. Oh yeah yeah yeah. I suppose the way things turned out, there was no allowance in your timetable. You yeah. know, this was just something you did yeah. on top of the teaching yes. job. And 
early days of guidance. You, you know, we, we, the biggest problem we had at that time was, was supporting the guys in the middle. We got to know the, the really bright ones, we got to know the wee guys that needed uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, at the other end, and, and this huge bulk of decent kids. We never seemed to have time to just tell them yeah. well done and get on with yeah. so there was yeah. a frustration. Yeah. But it was good in terms of my progress, it was another thing to look at. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it, I had good people to work with, it tested me, mm -hmm. and that was not a bad thing. Yeah. Not a bad yeah. thing at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, and then after your, after that, yeah. Donald retired. Ah <laughs> oh dear, yes, yes, yeah. yes. Well, we, we brought two departments together with Doreen, oh, Do Donald and Malcolm. Oh yes, tell us, so, tell us a bit about, yeah, about that, how that was, the, the two departments I, I think merged. It, yeah, in a sense, it was, it was not too difficult a merger because PE tends to overlap a lot anyway. Mm -hmm. And the, we had a lot of times that the girls would come up to use the facilities, yeah. the swimming pool, yeah. tennis courts. <laughs> so the relationship was already there. Yeah. Yeah. What we had to have were two heads of department. It took a little while to just bring that in together because, you know, people were of an age and they did what they did. But Donald and Doreen worked extremely well. Yeah. We had John Rutherford there at the time. Oh, yes, know, yes. Who wouldn't get on with John Rutherford? <laughs> Malcolm Hunter, a yeah. lot of experience. A lot of young teachers, Grace Hughes, Jane Campbell came oh, in. Yes, yes. And that chemistry just fired us all up at the time. It went. Yeah. So, so the challenge, it wasn't a difficult challenge. For you, for you. Quite seamless in many you ways. Wanted That's right. it was, you were. And I had become a wee bit restless. I'd done all these things and thought, if I don't move, really, within the next two couple of years, then I won't get away at all. Mm -hmm. So I applied for a couple of jobs, didn't get them, which was absolutely fine. But Donald and I had a long chat uh, with the head, and they created a post called Games Master, which was organising the extracurricular sport, really. Yes. Partly it kept me, which is a good thing because Donald had already said he was he was going to retire yeah. and Doreen was of an age as well. Yes. So, so that, that <laughs> little light was, was always shining mm -hmm. that, that hopefully I may mean, become head of PE. So, mm -hmm. so I did the Games Master job for a couple of years, I think it was, and then became head of PE. Yeah, well, which that was, was head, which of, was the whole head of the department. whole The yes, whole thing from point. primary one to sixth year. Yeah. Uh, we'd grown up to, I think, 12 staff at that time. Yes. A lot of demands on us, rightly so, that was the subject, uh, and, and what an atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And that's of course where my close buddy Ian Brun arrived in the scene oh, as well. Yeah, yeah. And Ian had, <laughs> yes, Ian had applied, him. Oh, God, <laughs> Ian, Ian, I met in the grass market, uh, in the Black Bull actually, <laughs> and he was working for Pickfords, he couldn't get a job. Couldn't yeah. get a job. Yeah. We'd already had a shop lead for his job, yeah. and Donald said, you know, there's just nobody, I just don't fancy anybody. And I said, well, absolute chance here, Donald. I met a guy, PE teacher, couldn't get a job. I just think he'd be good to fit the bill. So you can fit the bill. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, a chance yeah. thing. Yeah. So Donald hauled him in and was like me, just, just thought, absolutely right. Yeah. And that was the start Which of a was. very bad oh, time yeah. for Mac and Brown, <laughs> I have to tell you. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, was, he was one of my closest pals. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And we had great times. And, and of course, Nicely, um, he got my job at the end of the day. Yes, yeah. And I was, I went to the head and I said, "This is the wrong to government. He cannot just get this. There's, there's good people out there. Yeah. He has to get this on merit." Mm -hmm. And went through the whole process, and and yeah, he was the outstanding guy. Yeah. And, and kept it going. You know, we'd set up what we had in PE. A lot of hard work. A lot of yeah. good people. Yeah. Good, good people. Ali Donaldson, and Andrew Kerr. Great people in good, there. And, and, and he good, continued that. Good atmosphere. Great atmosphere, atmosphere. A lot of hard work. Yeah, yeah, a lot of fun. Of fun. Yeah. So then I can say play hard, yeah, but work yeah, hard. Yeah. And, and, and I, that was that was kind of my persona. And that's how yeah. I like to run it. And his loss is still felt. Can't now. It's, it's still just, can't get over. You no, know, I can't get over. You say most people can be replaced, but no, 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 no. And, no. and, and no. you know, testament to the, the whole mm -hmm. new sports centre. I mean, was. He would know every nut and bolt that went yeah, into the thing yeah. because he got so involved in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. He was. I can. Uh, there's a picture of him when looking at the plan. Yeah, and, and he changed things, and, things so, and he was yeah. absolutely right to do so. Yeah. He he lived life to the absolute full, mm -hmm. and, and if there's only if there's any any sort of decency in it, he he didn't have a long lingering horrible illness. No, it just no, just. Pop. Yeah. And I, lo I lost Rodney the very same way. Yes. You know, the guys I really thought I'd spend retirement with, golfing yeah. and walking and yes. having yeah. lovely meals, yeah. were those two guys. The three dames and the pantomime, as you well remember. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and the fun that was. Oh my goodness gracious me. Yeah, and, yeah. and here we are, you know. But Rod, you live your life, yes, yeah. live the day. Yeah. 
live the day. Yeah. Yep. And so you took you took over then as head of took PE. Took over head of PE. And, I did, and the first 15 at that time, which yes, was another great love of mine. Cool. I, I, mm -hmm. I loved the rugby, I suppose, Melrose background. I'd come up with a little first year teams. Mm -hmm. I thought it was just important the first year fourth team played against people. That, you know, yeah. that was my philosophy. Yeah. And we built up a huge amount of uh, rugby and hockey. Uh, at the school, yeah. extracurricular, all because they wanted to do it, yeah. and like other schools that made them do it, mm -hmm. these guys wanted it, mm -hmm. and I think we we got a wonderful relationship with the, the Edinburgh Referee Society, yes. and they let young guys cut their teeth mm -hmm. refereeing our games, mm -hmm. so our staff didn't have to do it. Mm -hmm. We got a lot of good staff, Paddington, you know, these guys who were just getting on a bit, but loved their rugby, they yeah, all oh, came out yes, twice a week, yeah, yes, yeah. Uh, and, and that was a great, happy scene at that yeah. time. The, that was a time when a lot of the other staff in the school, the academic staff, would come out could for come their, out. their training. I, I think could and would is quite an important oh, chat here. Oh, go on, explain. Well, yeah. I, I think the, the timetable, the, the, what we did in the school, I, I keep coming back to this, a little yeah, bit more yeah. relaxed atmosphere. The pressures were still there, mm -hmm. but different pressures. Mm -hmm. And I think these lads got out of the classroom. They, 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 they enjoyed their own sport. Kenny Thompson, John Rennie, Pat yeah. Eddington. Robert Small would get his tracksuit yeah. on and come on to Tipperland and take the first year. Yeah. Unlikely people, yeah. but wonderful contributors. And Harry the primary Quinn as well. Harry Quinn, Quinn would yeah. bell yeah. his lungs out <laughs> yeah. in the park, which is probably very good for Harry when I think about it. Yes, <laughs> and the primary men were, were all yeah. there. Yeah, because right. it, Ali Roberts they so didn't right. have all the extra work, it seems to me now. They yeah. didn't have the mark and they didn't, they didn't yeah. have all the pressures. Yeah. Uh, and I think at that time, we had cups of tea before we went out. Yeah. I used to take them out for a, a meal once a year. It was part of the heartbeat, wasn't it? Yeah, you know, it was yes, a good yeah, thing yeah. to do. But now, uh, you, yeah, oh, yeah, you were out two, yeah. two or three yeah, years. Yeah, I mean. yeah, of course, yes. <laughs> so so C3s and C4s. Yeah. How important. Yeah. How important. Yeah, yeah. And then it seems it's a different era, a different time. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people would like to do it. I just think yeah. they're knackered. They can't do it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a loss. And I think that's why maybe PE has grown the way it does. If the school believes this is important, mm. you need the people in that will run it and yes, do it. Yes. So maybe the game was for PE to get mm. more staffing. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? Happy days. Happy mm -hmm. days. Yeah, yeah. We, we used to get free tea or coffee at half past three if you were doing yes, extracurricular. Right, yes. And there was 20, 30 of us would be there. Yeah, Scientists yeah. would come down, yeah. we'd all have a chat. And yeah, it'd off and change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Oh, yes. Um, okay. And your rugby coaching, you, you've kept in touch with a lot of your yeah. players, haven't you? The rugby coaching kind of took off at a tangent. I, enjoy, I, I did enjoy rugby coaching very, very much. In hindsight, if I uh, all to do again, I'd have refereed instead of coached because what? coaches became ten a penny. There was hundreds of them, but right. referees there was a death. Yes. And yes. I think I might have made a mistake there. But yes. I coached Curry Rugby Club at uh -huh. the time for four years. I then came and coached the Wasonian Rugby Club. Mm -hmm had the Edinburgh under-21 team and the Scottish under-15 and under-16 team. So my yeah. coaching career yeah. Yeah, it was, was, was good, enjoyable. And you've built up a big, a very yeah, wide network big of pals there. Yeah, you, you do. do. That's, 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 that's the sport, whatever sport yeah, yeah, it is, of course. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And then came the moment when you left PE huge teaching. Moment. Huge moment. Now, tell, tell us, yeah, huge what were the moment. circumstances there? Huge moment. The circumstances were that you get into a stage in your life that things can become a bit rote. Mm -hmm. Leading a big department, you find that you're doing a lot of admin, you're doing a lot of planning, a lot of timetable work, which certainly wasn't my forty. But you can imagine the complexity of the PE timetable, looking oh, at primary oh, one, yeah. right through to <laughs> fifth, sixty, yes, yeah, yes. all having their priorities, yeah, all yeah. having to do it. Yeah. But we did it, Andrew Kerr and I worked away at that, and, and uh, but, but I just, I, plus at that time I had all the rugby fixtures to do as well, so that was another 24 teams over 18 Saturdays and blah 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 blah, yeah. so it was a lot of admin, yeah. not my 40, and I just found that that was becoming a bit rote, it was becoming, I knew what was going to happen in September, oh, yeah. we get ready for the cricket in October, and I, I don't know, there was just something lacking in, in my drive with that, and I was still mm -hmm. young enough to, to do something else. Yeah, yeah. Out the blue completely, again, Jim Cowan. Jim, I don't know if you ever had the experience, but Jim would ask you to his room. Yeah, the door would be open. Yeah. He never had the door shut. Yeah. Oh, and, no, then no. and then he would close the door and he'd sit you down and he'd have that Uncle Jim chat. Yeah, yes, yes. And he said, are you getting frustrated? I said, not frustrated, but just, I don't know, I don't know. He said, well, there's a new thing happening that I think you should think about. Mm -hmm. 
the and it was development. It was looking at the future of the school, looking at how we can give kids a chance to come yeah. to Watson's. Yeah. And immediately I thought that's I would like involved yeah. in that. Yeah. Leslie was already in setting it up superbly well. Uh, and I guess they needed just maybe that somebody with that background and contacts yeah. within the yeah. club and whatever. Yeah. I've no idea what. Yeah. Yeah. So I applied as I did several staff, right? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, and got the job and yeah. this was a completely new challenge it yeah. was hard leaving PE and I did it I weaned off over a year I taught two days in the heat I taught I was in the development office two days yeah. and taught PE for the for the other three oh, right. so it was a weaning so process weaning, yeah. although yeah. they had you know head of the department was up and everything else yeah. so there was a, you know, one year to opt out if it wasn't working oh, but I, uh, I, I just loved the idea you loved it, it yeah. was almost a blank sheet of paper nobody else mm -hmm. was doing it in Scotland really yeah. Uh, we did our own master plan, how we thought it so would work. So what, what was your, your job there? First of all, what year was that? Oh, Rod. About nine. Oh, well, I did, I did 13 years, uh, so it must have been 90 something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever. Well, in about, yeah, in about there. But, and so what was the, the job? I think what the job, your well, the job evolved as, as development evolved, but I think the idea was the looking at uh, how do we use our former pupils to help the school? Yeah which wasn't necessarily in fundraising, mm -hmm. but it was to build relationships between our former pupil group yeah. and the school. Yeah. And this was a huge can of worms with the Watsonian Club, mm -hmm. who had their paid secretary and their database. And the real way for this to work is to bring the whole thing into school. Yes. So I was used quite a lot to link between the club and the school in that, and have the confidence of the yeah. club members that this was the right thing to do. Right, because it now <laughs> seems that the club and the school are so well integrated, the, 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 it's the same organisation. Well, I, became, and I hadn't realised it was quite so It was very before. separate, there was a yes. paid official with a secretary, yes. uh, he had held the database, he held yes. the finances. Right. Uh, so all of that was run. Yes. The facts were, the absolute facts were, that of say 200 pupils leaving Watson's, about five joined the Watsonian Club because they charged the membership. Yes. yes. And why? Why would they join? Yeah. So that was tackled. David Mears, who was the secretary, was getting to the stage he wanted to retire. Yeah. So over a lot of work, not by me, but by others, over about five years brought the whole yes. thing together. Yes. The Secretariat came into the office yes. and we sold the idea that reunions, uh, mentoring, all the things that we do now can yeah, be handled professionally. One-stop shop. shop. <laughs> exactly, yeah. a one-stop shop. It took time. Yeah. It took time. And as I say, no real plans. We were learning as we went along. Mm -hmm. But the product was good, the philosophy was good. We needed capital buildings, we needed to help kids. So, you know, here's the, here's the raison d'etre, if you like, of, of development. Yeah. And it, and it grew yeah. and has grown. Uh, yeah. And um, after you retired from that... Um, <laughs> I thought I'd retired, Rod. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd retired, yeah. President of the Australian Yes, Club. yeah, yeah. Not something I'd looked for. I'd been secretary for the 13 or whatever years I was in here. Um, and I thought, that that's it. There was a new principal coming. Mm -hmm. And I was asked, would it be a good idea to, to take on the presidency and introduce them yeah. to the branches, the people yeah. looking at matter, probably keep them away from some of the folk he doesn't need to be. <laughs> uh, and Florence and I had a long chat about that. And, and, and I don't think I was ready to, to stop. I don't no, think I was ready no. to stop. So we said yes, or I heard myself say yes. And then for the first time, as you well know, as the president yourself, the idea of doing two years came up. Yes, yes. A lot of feedback from past presidents saying Same. we just got into this, we just yeah, understood yeah. it. Well, yes, that's what I felt myself. You, yeah, yes, absolutely. Yes, yes. So, so I thought, well, I did enjoy it, why not? So yeah, I, did, I did two years. Absolutely. And yeah. that's kind of to the point where we are. I've just yeah. handed over to Robert Heatley. Yeah. Who will be very, very good. Yes. And as you know, the, the nice thing with the, the ex presidents, the past presidents, are we're a little kind of subgroup. Yeah. And it's it's quite nice. Yeah. It's good. It's good. Yeah. Now, um, going going back to, to school, there must yeah. be some lots and lots of anecdotes. Oh, rot. <laughs> funny stories. Funny stories. Not so funny stories. Yeah, I don't have much time now. <laughs> <laughs> the things that strike me, yeah. I mean, we're, we're doing fine for okay, time. Okay. Oh yeah, go on. <laughs> one of one of the funny ones goes back to the days of uh, just maybe two years after the the merger. And the canteen ladies, as they were called then. Do you remember, were you here when they used to serve hot pies, greasy pies at, at the break? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, no. There's a wee woman sold hot pies and pink iced buns at the break. At the break oh, and they queued up the whole break yeah, to, yeah, get, to get, get the, the grease would <laughs> grease down the boys' faces. Anyway, at that time, 
The girls arrived and it was decided the menu should be changed. The ladies toilet of the of the catering staff was just as you go in the, the big oak doors from the playground yes. into the dining room. Oh, yes, just two little old yeah, cubicles yeah. there. And serious panic, I mean this was a big problem, that ladies started to hear voices and there, there was no, there's nobody there at all. So the grey lady from George Square oh, yes. this is something. Yeah. <laughs> and it was a real problem. It was discovered weeks after this and a lot of people heard the voices. That the kids had discovered opposite the doors another little trap door that led down a set of steps into a huge room under the dining room, about the size of the dining room, and it would be about 10 feet high yeah. that used to be used for storage. Oh. So they'd taken in a settee, they'd rigged up two lights, they had fag packets, they had tins of lager, <laughs> and they had formed a little glee club underneath, yeah, underneath the... what was the toilets of the ladies' catering. So what they were hearing. Well, the sixth year sneaking down, or fifth and sixth year sneaking down, <laughs> having a little smoke, yeah, and, and having it as their little club. Oh, I've never Very heard that before. So, of course, yeah, there was a raid. Yeah, there was a yeah, raid, yeah. and it all, it all got stopped. <laughs> it all got stopped. That was, that was very funny. Oh, yeah. And also a raid in the air raid shelters, because one of the air raid shelters, I'd been in it. Yeah. The, the, the top was just slightly off, so you could yeah. slip in. Mm -hmm. That became a smoking den. Oh, the yeah, smoking yeah. was a big thing then. Yeah, it, it You'd was, never yeah. see anybody smoking the cannabis no, now. No. But, yes, you did. Yes, remember around the back of the music school. And in this very room, yeah. we are sitting in the boys' oh, toilet. Boys <laughs> yes. Brun and I were dispatched to catch the, the boys smoking. Yeah, yeah. So we climbed up this roof, and it was just plastered in low beams, and yes. waited for these guys to arrive. Yeah. My great buddy thought this was hilarious, slipped, and his foot came right through the plaster <laughs> before the lads arrived. <laughs> And we, his leg was hanging through the plaster <laughs> and he couldn't get it back up again so we had to get him rescued and, and, and take off and that was funny that, yeah. was, that, oh, was, that yeah. was hilarious yeah. but yeah yeah we had we had visits from Arabs we had all sorts of things tell us about time. this mysterious Arab. Arab who arrived one day on oh, the campus God. to be honest the story is much better nowadays than it ever was at the oh, time it's grown it's grown in the it <laughs> but very briefly very briefly in the term uh, I had read that there was a student in London who had dressed up as a sheikh and he got wind and dine because people thought mm -hmm. and perceived that they, they saw a sheikh. End the term at Watson's, everybody's relaxed and thinking this is great and I thought, you know, it's time, they need to be stirred up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Never in a million years did I think Roger Young would say yes to this, but I said, how would you fancy an official visit from somebody of importance? Get the place smelling well, you know, make it, make it a tour, a proper tour, you'll take, yes. take me around. Yes, 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 great idea. <laughs> so I went to Mutri's, there was a, a, do you remember the theatrical yes, outfitters? Yes, yes, yes. I told them the story and they said, this is brilliant, we will not charge. So they, they got me dressed as the desert song, basically. Yeah, Arab yeah, shape, yeah. false tan, beard, the glasses. Yes. Malcolm Hunter had just changed car to a beautiful black, almost a limo. So he was in it, three of us were in it. Roger Young, Malcolm, myself. Yeah. So I got delivered by car to the front steps, Malcolm in his Highland dress. And Roger came out, welcomed me in Arabic, <laughs> brought me in and went into his office and we had a sherry just to calm the nerves and he said, okay, let's go for this. <laughs> so it, it was bizarre. I shook hands with people I was working with every day and they just saw an Arab sheikh. And he'd written to them saying, this is important, he's got a big family, he might board, let's make Watson sparkle. And it sparkled, it smelled of chlorine, it smelled of paint, my paint. <laughs> and I, I toured for half a day meeting people that I worked with, and, and nobody got it. And seeing people being yeah, very obsequious. I wouldn't and, see the names, yes. but one, one, I got a slight curtsy, I got nods, yes. I got, oh, you name it. <laughs> and of course, it was so funny, we had to stop every so often and just let it go and then oh, yeah. gather ourselves. Yeah. The only little glitch in the whole tour was a girl boarder from Dubai, and what I must have said to her, she said to her husband, He's a fraud. An Arab sheikh would never say that. I must have said a thousand blessings on your family or something. Yeah, yeah, and she right. said he wouldn't have done that. So there was panic. This is a fraud. But then Roger Young was with me. They thought, no, he could. He would he, be he, gone. Yeah. So we did a half day. I left. Arrived to work. You know, later in the day, and it was all chat, and it broke that it was it was a con, and a lot of people were angry. What? No. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of people. I mean. <laughs> The older generation <laughs> oh, thought, surely what not. a waste of time and yeah. how frivolous oh, and Roger thought it was a great hoot. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's become one of the three great story. stories. <laughs> <laughs> it's become a story, yeah, yeah indeed, yeah. indeed. It was fun, it was yeah. great fun. Yeah. But you know what, Rod, happy days. 
really mm -hmm. happiness. Many people mm -hmm. can honestly say after their, their time at uh, uh, any work that they thoroughly enjoyed, mm -hmm. and I did. You did as well. I did. You've got the same experience yeah. as I have. Yeah. Of course we And some of the great characters you met, well, I either did. through the school yeah. or the club or the development yes. office. Who I mean, all, all, all three in, in, in different ways, really. Yeah. The, the school-wise, we were at a, a time that a lot of these men had been in the war. Yes. They were coming to retirement, characters in abundance, yeah. 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 getting away with things never could be dreamed of nowadays. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Firm disciplinarians, most yeah. of them, yeah. because of what they'd seen and done. Yeah. Uh, a lovely guy, Donald Jewell, head of, head of uh, English, who never asked anybody to come to his room. He visited them, mm -hmm. much loved. Hector Walk, the editor yes. of the Watsonian magazine. Yeah. Uh, Archie Henry, yes. well, you know, dogged Archie. Yes. Archie took us up Ben Vorlich, and he had a pace. He just goes at the front, he does his pace, he loses everybody and yeah. waits for you to get there. Yeah. And as soon as you arrive, he just turns and <laughs> back out. <laughs> Archie Henry, so, so, so characters in abundance. Mm -hmm. and. Each one of them is very different. Mm -hmm. I remember Archie Henry climbing, you know, the staff room wall. Yes. There's about a half inch between the bricks. Yes. And Archie climbed up mm -hmm. along the top and back down again. He was yes. so, he was, he was an, an alpine climb. Yes. Yes. Amazing man. In the school, oh, I mean, the obvious guys are the Hastings, the Chris Hoys, you know, mm -hmm. young kids that have done extremely well. Yeah. Graham Bell was here. Yeah. Numerous, numerous pupils. Who keep in touch? And they come back and see you. Yes, no, no, no. Or when they well, come yeah, back. Yeah, they're, yes, they're if I meet them, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's lovely. I got a lot yeah. of emails from these guys. And then the people you meet through the job. Mm -hmm. We've had lunch in the House of Lords, mm -hmm. the House of Commons, mm -hmm. David Steele, Malcolm Rifkin, yes. who is yeah. who's a patron of the foundation. Um, Baron von Herzberg, who reputedly was descended from Jesus Christ, visited the school. Oh, because right. Mary Magdalene is supposed yeah, to have arrived right. in France with a child yeah. and the heritage came right, right through. He visited yeah. the place. Fantastic people, mm -hmm. fantastic people. We're like that. We're a village. This mm -hmm. is a village and, and within the village there are good, bad, different... This is what mm -hmm. Watson's is really. Yeah. Very special place, yeah. Rod. Yeah. Very special place. Um, but before we, we conclude, Wait, no. there's one area that we haven't spoken about, is your angling. You've spoken ah, about your rugby. Fishing. The fishing. Can fishing. tell us all about that? Fishing. Well, when my father bought the, the little place in, uh, in Newstead, Melrose, the fishing rights of the land became part of the farm. Yeah. So we were in a little village and very early on the boys wanted to fish. And of course my dad said, well, of course you can. So way, way back, aged seven or eight, I would start fishing in the, on the, school, the stretch. Yeah. And I did that all through my college days as well. I just loved the sport. I arrived at George Watson's College to be told that they actually owned two miles of the River Tweed. Yeah. That a gift in 1966, I think it was, had been given to the school to allow the pupils to visit the countryside. It wasn't about England really, but visit the countryside, learn about the countryside and fish. It was for the boys. And that was rightly so. And, and the donor said his worry was that the, the adults, if they took over, would take over and the kids would never get to fish. Mm -hmm. So there are very set rules about how you do it and what you do. Yeah. But you've got to remember Monday to Friday mm -hmm. is a school day, yeah. so it's very unlikely that the pupils can go. So they form a syndicate, which I'm now part, and that pays. Whatever the bill is for the year, the syndicate pay the bill. So the school have no fees whatsoever to pay. So our fishing rights, if you like, mm -hmm. are divided by the 12 of us. Yes. annually yeah. and it's just a wonderful two mile facility mm -hmm. stories from way back the train used to run along the line there at Thornley oh, yes. and it left the Waverley to go to Gala Shields yes. and we'd stop oh, the train yes. in the beat to let the boys off oh. and then pick them up again at the end of the day and bring them back to you Edinburgh. remember that? no I don't but no but there were stories of it oh, yes. of course course that line was, yeah. was taken out boys had to fish in school uniform <laughs> they weren't allowed to fish out of a uniform. Yeah. So we've got photographs of lads in their blazers, ties, with yeah. a salmon in their hand. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a great asset to the place. Mm -hmm. uh, it can't be sold because of the gift. Yeah. Uh, and Kenny Thompson, one of the staff here now, took over from me. I ran it for years. And Kenny takes them out. So Kenny's still, still, still active. And Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And rightly so. Yeah. yeah, it's great fun. 
Your mind is on nothing else but fishing rod. Yeah. There's yeah. nothing else you can think about. One of the images <laughs> I have is is of you, of you or someone out on the, out on the front lawn. We used to teach casting on the front lawn. Casting, casting right. there on the front lawn. Uh, everybody would drive and say, you're not going to catch much yeah. in there, yeah. son. More than <laughs> not that we caught much. Too much either. Yeah, yeah. 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 we taught salmon casting out in the, in the front there with mm. Chris Price, who was an actual instructor. Oh, Chris, of course. Chris, Chris came in and, the and taught the kids how to do boys and girls. The best fishermen. I ever had was a girl at Watson's. Really? She had yeah. such a wonderful light. She just way with her. She got yeah. it. She got it. Yeah. So yeah, just another little, yeah. another part of school life. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Now, w when, when you look at the school now, yeah. and you see a pupil starting S one, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. what advice would you give mm -hmm. them? Oh my goodness, what a question! They're probably too young to. They're probably too young to 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 get what I would say. Because they've nothing to gauge their, their experience at Watson's on, really. Yeah. Take advantage of everything the place has. I used to get very frustrated in guidance when people would say, oh, he just comes home and he sits and he does nothing, or she does nothing. Yeah. And you think, <coughs> what interests are, oh, they're like this, and it's here. Everything really is here, from chess to orienteering to yeah. fishing. Yeah. It frustrates me that when the pupils don't take advantage. Mm -hmm. so, so go for it. Be part of whatever it is that, that you, you really want to do because that out of classroom experience mm -hmm. prepares you for what you're going to move out into yeah. the world with. Yeah. As important as the academic side, without question. Without question. So, yeah, take advantage of the place. Use it. And what advice to a young member of staff about uh, staff? Uh, or if you were appointing uh, a young member of staff, what would, you, what would you look for? What sort of qualities? I was never too impressed with paper qualifications. Mm -hmm. it, it, they're ten a penny. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it's a standard, but that's all it is. It doesn't tell you the, the person. And you know, the old adage that you can actually tell when somebody walks in within 30 seconds, yeah, just that. where that heartbeat is. Yeah. And that's what I looked for. I looked for character. Yeah. I looked for people that came in and maybe were nervous, maybe not as relaxed as they might have been, mm -hmm. not confident, but not overconfident. Mm -hmm. You know, and the question, what will you give the school? What, why should I take you? What would you do to help this place? Yeah. Uh, so that was my guide. It was yeah. never the, Look the, for the someone degree. Something with a bit of zest, something yeah. a bit of yeah. fire. Yeah. Maybe a bit off, off the wall a bit in some ways, yeah. yeah. but uh, yeah. usually that works. Usually yeah. it works. Yeah. So for a young member of staff, I would say the same as the people. Learn from it, take advantage. Yeah. What a breeding ground. Think of the deputy heads we've had, Rod, and Watsons mm -hmm. have gone into full hedges. Oh, lots of them. Yeah. A lot of them. Yeah. A lot of them, because yeah. they cut their teeth, they learned yes. it here, yes. and they were allowed to, mm -hmm. and then went on to great things. Yes. Yeah. yeah, good place. And and finally, yeah. looking at PE at the moment, yeah. is, well, I was going to say spanking new block. It's yeah. not as new as that, but it still looks new. Yeah, sure. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you compare it to your the early days, when there were the two gyms. Sure. <laughs> well, um, well, yeah, I mean, would you... the subject has changed dramatically. Yeah. And of course, the changes that were enforced on us in some ways, we were suddenly an examinable subject. Yeah. A lot of schools, sadly, took that as an excuse not to do extracurricular. And they said, oh, it's more important to get their own levels and whatever, and, and stop yeah. the extracurricular. Yeah. And that was a great, great regret, huge mm -hmm. regret. Here, that would never happen. It had to be in tandem with mm -hmm. what we do curricularly and extracurricularly. Mm -hmm. The facilities are fantastic, but it's the people, it's the people that make it happen. It's the staff that you have that yeah. want to do it. Yeah. You know, I, I was at my little grandson's sports day in Edinburgh. They have no PE, but oh. they have wonderful young teachers who made yeah. sports day quite special. All right. Just, you know, if they would only get into some yeah, form yeah. of physical education or yeah. physical exercise, mm -hmm. they, they would do it. Mm -hmm. So we, we are driven by the staff we have. The facilities are important, but not as much as the guys that take it. Yeah. And we've got motivators there, without question. Yeah. We've got probably the best staff that I can remember here mm -hmm. at the moment. Yeah. We've got the best hockey umpire, which is the eighth hockey oh, umpire yeah, in the of world. Course, Sarah, yeah. Sarah. Yeah. Andrew Kerr, the world record holder in sevens medals. Yeah. In the one school. Yeah. Amazing. Helen Blevins, who sadly is leaving us. Uh, she's joining the police. Oh. A wonderful rowing coach. Yeah. So it's there. It's there. Yeah. The facilities, you know, the architect wouldn't allow us to build outside the footprint of the of the, the old department. Right. So everything there was within was the footprint. Oh, he was an yes, yes, amazing no. man. Mm -hmm. Amazing man. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. and, and the, the variety of new sports, do you find it's more diverse than in your time? Or? I think I mean, philosophy is quite a good. Squash, yeah, yeah, but you know what? 
I would rather see a kid do something than nothing. Yeah. And if, if PE's role is to give them experiences, mm -hmm. that's the role I think it should be. Yeah. And after school, then you focus on the things the school wants to mm -hmm. offer. Good swimmers will never become Olympians in our school pool, mm -hmm. but we can link up with a local club. Basketball players probably wouldn't happen through what's only basketball, but it isn't such a thing. Yeah, but you yes. can go across yeah. to Edinburgh and play for them. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's the role. Get them involved, do something, and then take it from there. Do you, and final, 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 question. final. <laughs> Do you ever think if you'd been five foot nine and got into the Great question. Great question. Do you ever think, oh, that could Great have been in a completely different way? An awful lot of my friends. Chief Constable of oh, Lothian yeah. and Borders yeah. Police. <laughs> <laughs> Sergeant Mack and Mellows. Um, a lot of my friends are policemen, by chance and design, because yeah. I still kept that interest in it. <laughs> All of them at this moment in time say, thank God you didn't do police. And that's an awful indictment. That's, a, that's such a sad thing. I just saw it as exciting, varied profession, yeah. which is what I joined, actually. Yeah. Uh, regrets. I'm probably the best reader of Val McDermott and Joanna Dexter and yeah. any yeah. Yeah. Oh, programme. Still... I will be watching it. Yeah. Yeah. No regrets. Absolutely none. Absolutely none. A great career.